Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, we want to welcome our uh, social media followers and partners and friends. We want to let you know that we appreciate you for uh, following us and staying connected with us. You know, you're really a blessing to us. And we just want to uh, 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 we thank God for you and let you know we appreciate you and we value you. And uh, we uh, treasure your prayers, your financial support, everything that you do to help us uh, uh, put out the gospel. Of Jesus Christ uh, to those that are in desperate need of it and that's all of mankind all of mankind is in desperate need of uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ the good news of Jesus Christ so um, this is what we uh, want you to uh, uh, stand in agreement with us about and just keep believing God for us uh, 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 that we will um, be completely led by his spirit given over to his word to uh, present the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world to every individual, every creature. All right, then. Well, we're going to get ready. We're going to pray, and we're going to just get ready to get into the Word of God. We're going to be talking with you again, uh, following up on, that, on the Scripture about uh, how to keep a, a healthy uh, spirit, soul, and body. How to keep a healthy spirit, soul, and body. And so we're going to just uh, get ready to get in that. But before we do that, we're going to pray and just believe God. I want you to just, right where you're at, I want you to open up your, 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 your spirit, your soul, and your body to be able to receive from the Word of God this morning because the Word of God has the power to uh, uh, keep you healthy in every area of your life, your spirit, your soul, and your body. So we're going to pray right now and we're going to stand in agreement with you and we believe in God's Word that you're going to receive. That's what's going to uh, uh, sustain your, your, your health in your spirit, soul, and your body. It is the Word of God. It's going to keep you faultless, blameless. Uh, so just be prepared to receive it like that on that level. Amen. Father, we thank you right now for all the uh, viewers and listeners right now, Father God, that are hearing this uh, teaching, Father God. We thank you that your anointing is up on their life, Father God, and they shall experience everything that you have for them in your word this morning, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that they come willing to listen and obey your word this morning, to receive it. And we believe in right now, Father God, that you're going to meet them at the level of their expectation. They're expecting you to do great things in their life, Father God. So we thank you for it right now. We thank you. Right now, I want you to just receive your expectation from God right now. Whatever you're expecting of him, believing him for, receive it right now by faith. Everything you receive from God, you got to receive it by faith. You have to have the desire to take it by faith. Amen. So we, we believe in God that you, you're armed and you're ready to take this word that you hear this morning. Take it by faith and let it become manifested in every area of your life. Amen. All right. We're going to get ready to get into the, this morning's teaching. And we're talking about uh, how to keep your spirit, soul and body healthy. How to keep your spirit, soul and your body healthy. Glory to God. We're going to look at uh, our foundational scripture is 1 Thessalonians, the 22nd through the 24th verse. And we're going to be reading from the CEV version for this, uh, this scripture right now. We probably will do different versions, but right now to, to the introduction of this, of this teaching, we're going to use the uh, CEV version. And we'll be looking at 1 Thessalonians, the 22nd chapter, I mean the 5th chapter and the 22nd through the 20th fourth verse. Now, I, I, I want you to really believe, put yourself in a place where you believe that God, it is God's deepest desire for your spirit, soul, and your body to be healthy and faultless, blameless. And you, you got to, you, you have to believe this here uh, because it's, you know, it, you got to bring your faith up to that level to believe this here. Because if you don't believe it and you're not willing to bring your faith up to that level, it can't happen to you. The devil will, he will keep you thinking that uh, it's, you know, it, it, uh, whatever, you know, you know, whatever will be, just, you know, just let it be. But no, you're going, we're going to get into the word of God and we'll let you know God's will for your spirit, soul, and your body to be healthy. He says, and don't have anything to do with don't have anything to do with evil. Now, that's the first thing that, that you have to understand. That's the first Thessalonians, the second, I mean, the fifth chapter and the 22nd through the 24th verse. Now, that's something you, and reading from the contemporary English version of the Bible. Now, that's the first thing you're going to have to do. You're going to have to make a, make a decision that you're going to have, you're not, you're not, 
going to do have anything to do with evil. You're going to depart from evil. You know, a lot of people say, well, you can't live in this world. No, you can live in this world and still not partake of the evilness of this world. You don't have to indulge in evil thoughts, evil behavior, evil activities. But you have to trust God about it. And this comes by being born again. When you get born again, uh, you, get, you get, see, because the reason why we are given to evil intents and evil passions and desires is because our nature hasn't been changed. Our own nature, our own nature was geared and bent to giving in to evil. Having it, our own nature was, was bent and geared into uh, living our lives in and out of the knowledge of good and evil. We, you know, we have good, one, live good sometime, and then we live evil sometime. We, we, we live according to our nature. But God, but God, when we got born again, he gave us his nature. We have the nature of God. We have the nature of God. And there is no evil in God's nature. There is no evil in God's nature. So what he did, he, he, when we got born again, what he did, he, he, he awoken up, he awakened our created nature that he put in us in the beginning. He awakened it, set it free, delivered it from the enemy, causing it to be confused about what type of nature that it has, or what kind of nature it is. So, 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 so now, when you get born again, you can expect to have the power to avoid all evil coming into your life. It may be all around you, but it won't come in and invade you. It won't come in and take over you. It won't get in your. It won't get in your. your it can't get in your nature. It can't get in your attitude, your way of thinking, your way of living. Evil can't. Because you have a new nature. Your nature dictates what's going to take place in your life. Amen. All right. So it says don't have anything to do with evil. So we're getting that out of the way. Because you say, well, how can you do that? That's how you do it, by getting born again. You, can, you cannot avoid evil if you're not born again. And I say avoid it, avoiding it coming in and manipulating your life. Having a stronghold in your life. Having you, what you, 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 you control by, I can't help it. When you get born again, it frees you from that because you get a new nature. You get the God kind of nature. See, uh, our own nature was influenced by Satan. Our new nature is, our new born again nature, it is influenced by our Heavenly Father. He influences us now. We listen to Him. We take on His attributes, His way of thinking, His way of living. Amen. All right, so we got that out of the way that you can avoid evil. Because you, if, you if, you, if, con, con, if you're not willing to be convinced by the word of God that you can abstain from evil, you can stay out of evil. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, evil will run ramshod up in your life. It'll run all over you. But you got to be confident in it. You got to believe God's word, that it's God's will, that you don't have to uh, be controlled and manipulated by evil thoughts, by evil intents, by evil uh, images. You don't, no evil has any power over you. No evil, once you get born again. All right, the 23rd verse, uh, uh, it says, I pray that God who gives, I pray that God who gives peace. Now, I want you to look at God who gives peace, God. That's something you have to understand because as we look at this, uh, peace is one of the most valuable assets to your health. It's one of your most valuable assets to keeping good health. And keeping God, keeping the God kind of health. His health. So, so I pray that God who gives peace will make you completely holy. <laughs> completely holy. That's what I Fought or without any blemishes, without any blame, blameless. Amen. He, it'll keep you in the position where you're hearing God speak to you about you the same way he spoke to Job about him. Job, God told, told the devil, come on here somebody, that Job, have you considered my servant Job, my, my child Job, have you considered him? He's perfect and upright. He's blameless. There's no fault in him. And the, and the enemy said, yeah, yeah, 
you take away from him. Now, see, the enemy knows this here. That if the only way that the devil can get to you, God has to take it away. God has to take his presence from you. But we have to understand this here. God's presence is honored and controlled in our lives by our faith in him. You have to have faith in God. God is looking at your faith in him, that you trust him no matter what you're going through. You going you see what that, what what Job did. Job made a decision that he was going to keep his integrity clean and right with God. He wasn't going he wasn't going to cast any blame upon God about what's going on in his life. Amen. Glory to God. He was going to trust God. And that's what we have to be willing to do to trust God. Amen. When you get born again, you're on the road of trusting God completely. He says, who gives peace will make you completely holy. He will make you completely holy and make your spirit, soul, and body uh, be kept healthy and faultless until our Lord Jesus Christ return. The 24th verse, the one who chose you, the one who chose you can be trusted. In other words, God who chose you, who called you, he can be trusted. The one that chose you, the one that call, called us out of darkness, that called us out of that evil nature, those evil passions and desire that called us out of it, we can trust him to keep us out of it. Amen. Glory to God. Because God understands this here, that God wants us to be healthy. He wants us to be healthy. Amen. Because you can respond to him better when you're healthy. Amen. Amen. You can fellowship, you know, uh, um, uh, when there's a lot of sickness and poverty and disease plaguing a marriage, a relationship, it, 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 has the, the, it opens doors for tension and, and uh, uh, unhappiness and uh, 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 it, it, it puts pressure on that being together and everything, that, that unity and that fellowship when those things are plaguing a relationship. Amen. Glory to God. And God doesn't want these things, these things to plague uh, uh, um, our, our relationship with him. He doesn't want that to take place in our life. So we're going to look at some other scriptures here. Now what we're doing, we're going we're gonna to set up a, a good knowledge base from God's word how to keep our Spirit, soul, and body health. We're going we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, to see because uh, your knowledge about health, that's what's going to help you to live a healthy life. If you don't have no knowledge about, and I'm saying this, about the God kind of health or this here, or the health that God has provided for you. See, God has provided a certain the type of health for his children. And it's the same health that he has. Our health, our health it should be no different from God's health. There's no sickness in him, so there's no sickness in us. Because realize this here, it's, he gave us his nature. <laughs> he gave us his nature. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I have the nature of my father. I have the nature of my father. And my father is God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right, look at, let's look at uh, Psalms 92. And we're going to look at the 12th through the 15th verse. And we're going to look at this from the CEV version of the Bible. Psalms 92. The 12th through the 15th verse. And we're going to look at it from the CEV version of the Bible first. Now, what we're dealing with is getting our, getting a, getting God, get, pulling from God's knowledge, God's word about our health. In other words, you're seeing what God says about your health, how to keep it. Yes. You're learning from him. You're learning from him. He, he is the source of your health. He is your great physician. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, really God. And that says here, it says, uh, it says good people. Now, I, as I get ready to go into this here, I, I really want what, what, when I saw, saw the scripture, because I, uh, I'm more, as more knowledge and understanding that I gained from the word of God, I understand that God really is, 
when he, even when he's talking about good, God really wants to approach that word good as his people. Uh, God's people. You know, because, you know, a lot of people can be good, but they don't mean that they're God's people. You can do good things. You can do a lot of help. A, a, a lot of humanity's ills and, and problems and everything. But that doesn't mean uh, you're God's people. Uh, you, 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 you understand? You have to be born again to be God's people. Yes. To be a good person, you don't have to be born again. Just do good deeds, do kindness and everything. But to be God's people, you must be born again. And we're going to show this because good in the mind of God, God, God is not God is not just looking at God's not looking at looking at good people. He's looking at upright people, people of of, of righteousness. That's what he's looking at. Amen. Because now, 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 he didn't say that Job was good. He said he was upright. It's a high level of being good. That's taking on the righteousness of God. Amen. Amen. And if you go and and if you go and if, and if you and if you're endeavoring to be good, you better make sure that you're good like God is good. Remember, Jesus said, there's none good, come on somebody, but the Father. Yes. So your good got to line up with God's good. So you got to find out how good God is. Yes. You got to study his goodness. And then let your life reflect the goodness of God. Let's move on. So, so, so good people <laughs> will prosper like palm trees and they will grow strong. Godly people will prosper like palm trees and they will grow strong. Strong and healthy. God's people. The righteous. The righteous. The 13th verse says, they will take root in your house. Now, now y'all, your house. Now, the house, God's house is what? His church. They will take root in your house. See, it's very important for you to get rooted and grounded. Really, it's very important for you to become planted in the house of the Lord to grow. See, a lot of people are trying to grow outside of God's house, and it won't happen. Because everything God has for you, he put it in his house for you to grow. To meet your needs. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. So it says, it says they will it say they will take root in your house, Lord God, and they will do what? Well, they will succeed. A lot of people, reason why people are not succeeding in life, succeeding God's way in life, is because they're not planted and rooted in, in the house of God. They're not divinely connected by God in a, in a local church. That's the reason why. I, I, you, you, we have to understand this here. God set pastors. Whether you like it or not, whether you, you just because you, 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 you may be experiencing someone saying that they're a pastor, operating in that position, and they're not operating in the position where, uh, uh, see, God designed pastors to, to operate, first of all, from his heart, from his character and his nature. And he wants people, he wants that his pastors to operate from his nature, his character, and he wants them to feed his people his knowledge, God's knowledge, and God's understanding. Not the world's knowledge and not the world's understanding. When you get with a pastor and you know you got you know you with you with the pastor that, that, that's ordained by God, is he is he demonstrating to you the character and the nature of God? Now you got to study the character and the nature of God to know if this pastor is demonstrating the character and the nature of God. So you got to do your due diligence. You got to get into the word of God and look at the word of God. Find out, look at, look at, you can look at uh, the gospel, see how Jesus demonstrated himself because he is the great example of every pastor. He's the great example of the, of the, of the shepherd. He's a great example. Hey, don't, you, if you're going if you're gonna to get an example for a God-like pastor or shepherd, you're going to have to go into the word of God and extract from that how that pastor should be, that God is calling you to. 
You got to go to the word of God. And, and so you can see, is this pastor demonstrating the nature and the character of God according to, to the word of God that I'm studying, that I'm, I'm, I'm hearing? Is, he, is this being manifested in his life? Amen. And is he giving me the knowledge of God or is he just giving me some of his feelings and his emotions? It's what he's saying to me. Is it based upon the word of God? What come out of his mouth? Can I go to the word of God and connect it? Amen. That's the type of pastor that God wants you to be connected to. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. So, uh, uh, see, your, as your pastor does well, you're going to do well. As your pastor does well, you're going to do well. Amen. As your pastor demonstrates the character and nature of God, he, he exemplifies that the, 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 the knowledge and, and understanding of God, you're going to do the same thing because that's what he's feeding you. That's what he's putting into you, sowing into you. Amen. I'm not sowing into you my vision. I'm sowing into you God's vision that he gave me. That he, from the word of God. The vision here is for every individual that come into these doors to come in with the mindset that they're going to be transformed into the image and likeness of God's son, Jesus Christ. And each time you come in, you get more revelation knowledge of who you are in Christ and what Christ did for you. You don't, you, you don't come in here, uh, you, you shouldn't come into no house of God expecting no change. Every time you, you're going from glory to glory. You're going from faith to faith every time you come in. Amen. Amen. You don't come in. You don't. It, it, it's not God's will for you to have a constant. Have the constant care and burdens of this world on you. That's not the will of God. Glory to God. So he says, uh, so they will be strong like the cedars of Lebanon. In other words, now, palm trees, the, th the strength of palm trees, and the reason why they look so beautiful and they, they can grow so tall, uh, they do grow so tall, is because the base of them, they have a strong root system, very deep. They go very deep. And that's what you have to understand. Uh, this is what God wants us to, he wants us to understand our deepness, I mean, our height in God is dependent upon our deepness in God. In other words, how deep you go into the, to the word of God to understand, to maintain uh, your uh, health, you maintain you having a, a, a healthy spirit, soul, and body is going to depend, it's going to depend upon you getting in, going into the deep things of the word of God, not just laying up on, not just kind of getting the top service. Well, you're not, you know, you, you don't want to be a person where well, you just come to, come to service one day a week. Uh, 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 you, want, you want to be a person, every time the doors are open, you want to be there where you can catch hold of what God is saying for you. Because this, this would, this, every day is an extension Yet every time that the doors are open, every time the word of God is getting ready to go forth, it's a, it's a time of, of extending your growth in God, establishing your relationship with him to become deeper and more intimate every time. Because that's what the word of God does. Amen. So it says, it says, they will take root in the house of the Lord. So they will, uh, they will be like trees. They shall stay. They shall what? Stay healthy. Yeah, I want you to get this here. They shall what? Stay healthy. Look at your neighbor and say, I will stay healthy. I will stay healthy. When I stay in the house of God. When I stay in the house of God. I will stay healthy. <laughs> you, stay in the, you stay in the house of God and be attentive to the word of God, you're going to stay healthy. Amen. Give yourself to the give yourself to the to the to the to the house of God. Give yourself to the word of God and you will stay healthy. That's a promise from God. He says they will stay healthy and fruitful. You, bear, you won't just bear some fruit. You're going to bear much fruit. In every season, every season of our lives, we're going to demonstrate the character and the nature of God. Amen. Glory to God. We're going to see ourselves healthy all the time. Glory to God. We're going to stay healthy. Even, look, I like this part right here. 
even when they are old. You're going to look young even when you, the number of years don't match up to, to the beauty on you, to the youth on you. Amen. To the strength in you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless God. Glory to God. This, was, this, is, this is God's plan for our life. To stay healthy. Come on somebody. To stay healthy and to do well. To stay healthy and to be successful in life. Glory to God. That's the reason why God said in, in uh, uh, Joshua 1, he said, he said uh, uh, Joshua, this is what you're going to need to go over and take the land of Canaan, the land of promise you. You're going to need this because the people over there, they're greater and mightier than you. They're bigger than you. They're stronger than you. They got more than you got. But Joshua, if you go over there with this in your mind, in your spirit, in your soul, and in your body, that you're going to meditate upon my word both day and night, you shall make your way prosperous and you will have good success. That means health to me. That means I'm going to be healthy. And I'm going to stay healthy. Amen. Glory to God. You got to stay healthy. Amen. Don't receive, don't receive any other report than a good report of the Lord concerning your health. Amen. God wants you healthy. Amen. Glory to God. Says, stay healthy. And even when you're old, in the 15 verse, it says, and they, will, and they will say about you, the Lord always does right. God is our rock. In other words, keeping yourself help, healthy keeps you out of that arena of complaining about God. Blaming God. Keeping yourself healthy. So it's, it's, it's very important for God for you to stay healthy because he knows that if, you, if healthy people are less healthy people will not be complainers. They won't, they, they won't be subject to complaining about things because they, are, they focus on staying healthy. And people understand, you know, I, uh, mumbling, grumbling, and complaining is bad against your health. You can't, you can't stay healthy like that. You want to keep, you want to keep that mumbling, grumbling, mumbling, grumbling, and complaining out of your spirit, out of your soul, and out of your body. So what the first, what you want to do, understand is just stay. We're going, right now we have to give that to close. But the first principle you want to uh, get yourself really uh, built up in is staying in the house of God. Now a lot, lot of people, you know, it's, uh, we're a, a lot of people have allowed themselves to let the enemy distance themselves from the, the love of the church, the love of, uh, 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 and, and I want you to understand this here, when the enemy can get you where you're disheartened and discontent about the church, he's also working in you where you can be, be a complainer about God. Because you have to realize this, whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, the church is God's house. He established the church. What, you need to understand this here. Whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, God loves the church. And if you're going to be successful in being born again, spirit filled, and being a disciple of Jesus Christ, you must love the same thing God loves. You must. And this is, this is something you have to really get, get in your spirit. Love is designed by God to keep you healthy. When you, when you get consumed with love, the love of God, you're going, to stay, you're going to stay healthy because God is healthy. Love will ward off all type of disease. Love is, a, love is the most strongest repellent against evil. I'm talking about the love of God. The love of God is the strongest repellent against evil. It's impossible to love God and to... Uh, entertain evil thoughts, evil attitudes, and evil emotions. So we're going to see you next week. Amen. We just believe in God that you grabbed hold of this today. We're just going to kind of build up on this here. We're going to do a, a good series of teaching about this because uh, uh, we as born-again believers and spirit-filled believers and disciples of Jesus Christ, we've got to become serious about having a healthy spirit, soul, and body. Having a healthy spirit, soul and body, so we can function on the level that God created us to function on, a healthy level, staying healthy. So we want to encourage you this morning, amen, for you to just make a decision based upon the word of God. Go and study these scriptures. You know, let's just study it and find out that it is God's will for you to stay healthy. 
and to, and, to, and to do well, to be successful, to be an overcomer. Amen. So I want to encourage you to just believe that. Trust God. We know that you received that this morning. So we just want you to believe God and trust him. And, and just uh, what you're going to do now, you're going to take what you heard this morning. You're going to take it and, and, and begin to meditate upon it both day and night. And you're going to start seeing the manifestation of it in your life right now. So we thank you for you just uh, partaking with us and, and fellowshipping with us on uh, 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 Facebook and our social media outlets that we're reaching out to. We want to let you know that we really appreciate you. And we want to take this opportunity tonight. If you're not born again, if you're not, if you haven't received Jesus Christ as your personal and Savior, I want you to know this very easy. It's not hard. God wants you to receive Jesus Christ so you can have a, a healthy relationship with God. We cannot have a relationship with God without first repenting of our sins and turning our hearts toward God through Jesus Christ. We got to receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. And then we, then, then he, he, he brings us to the Father. Without any faults, without any blemishes, he brings us before him. So we want to encourage you to just go before Jesus right now and just receive him as your personal Lord and Savior and you're born again. It's just that simple. He's taking you right where you're at right now. All, all you got to do is just receive Jesus. And when you receive Jesus, the Father accepts you. And you're born again. Now you got to get, get in a, a local church and get planted where you can grow in the things of God. Grow in the knowledge. Grow in the knowledge of God's word for you. Amen. So we want to encourage you. If, if you did that, you can go on our website or you can call us here and let us know that you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And your personal Lord and Savior. And you, you des deeply desire to learn more about being born again, more about being spirit filled, and more about being a disciple of Jesus Christ. And we will assist you and help you in that. Amen. We'll let you know that we love you. We appreciate God for you. And we're here for you. And I always remember there's always a warm seat of welcome here for you at Dominion Life Worship Center. Matter of fact, your seat is calling out to you, saying, I, I need, I'm need. i here for you. I want you to come and occupy me. That seat of warm welcome is here for you. So we want to encourage you to come out and be with us uh, uh, next Sunday, amen. And we just uh, encourage, encourage you and just want to strengthen you in the Lord, amen. So we'll see you next time. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Bless God. <laughs>